The first piece, he say, just uh, calm down your mind and pay attention to your son. Son to Chinese is a spirit. You should understand in ancient time, especially in northern China, when people sleep in the nighttime because the winter time is so cold. So underneath the bed, actually, there's a fire there to keep the bed warm. So that area is warm. Once you get out of the bed area, it's become very cold. So because of the reason a lot of this exercise, they had to energize the body first while sitting on the bed. So once they wake up, they can just sit up easily. This kind of sitting position in Chinese ancient time was very popular. That's because at that time, simply chair was not as popular as today. You go back to 2,000 years ago, actually, let's completely on the floor. So when this culture passed to Japan during Chinese Han Dynasty, the Chinese, uh, Japanese uh, will copy their kind of habit, and then become Japanese today's society, sit on tatami. Until later, the bed imported into Japan. So now we look at that. When you just wake up, you sit on this position. The first thing, your mind, try to focus. That's the most important thing, try to get a mind focus. When the mind focus on the sun is a spirit. Chinese always believe the spirit reside in the center of your brain. When your mind is focused in the center of your brain, all the brain cell is not really activated. Then this way you can come in down. But once your mind is on the things, different things, that means all the cell, the brain cell get activated and function. So that means your mind becomes confused and becomes emotional. The most important thing in the morning, if you can calm down your mind by thinking the center of your brain, actually it called the Mapio Palace. The location is actually is the center where the pituitary gland and pineal glands resides. Once you put your mind there, Chinese believe you are using your mind to lead the qi there. And in this case, you can activate the hormone production, Chinese called original essence. That's one of the key words of the original essence is the hormones, which can extend your lifespan. Because the reason when you sit there, you learn how to keep your mind calm. At the same time, try to cool down your physical body and may provide your body in a highly high level of a relaxation state. So the first piece actually is only sit down. What you do is they say put your hands right in front of your abdominal area. Very simple, allow it to lay down. Do not lift it up. Lift it up, the shoulder arm will be tense. Simply lay down, comfortable. This position is called wo gu. Wo gu, the Chinese meaning is called hold to firm. To firm what? This is the center. Chinese say this is the Luo Dan Tian. Luo Dan Tian, that means where the qi or body's energy store, actually in your abdominal area. But today, the scientists confirm this place is called the second human brain. Where is the bio battery? Where supply the qi or the Western society called the bioelectricity. So this is place the battery. Once you put your hands here, then your mind in this part and your mind in this part. So mentally, your mind can focus in the center. The same time from energy-wise, because your mind keeping this spot, two spot, then the chi cannot, will not be led outwards to activate your physical functions. So in this case, your mind can keep in a highly relaxed, calm state. So this kind of practice is called embryonic breathing. So if you're interested in that, then, then uh, there's a book called Embryonic Breathing. Now, when they do this piece, you close your eyes. At the same time, the tongue touches the palate of your mouth. Because as the tongue touches the palate of your mouth, according to Chinese acupuncture theory, there's a conception vessel, there's a governing vessel. The mouth area, you touch it, then make this yin and yang vessel connected. So this place is considered like a bridge. Eventually, from the electronic, electronic words, it's called like a switch. So what you do is connect them, so make the qi circulate in these two vessels smoothly. Then as we understand, these two vessels irregulate the body's 12 channels because vessels like a reservoir. So all this theory you want to understand is all explained in my book, The Roots of Chinese Qigong, also The Essence of White Crane. So those are people you are interested to learn, to learn deeper aspect of the Qigong. Those are books I highly recommend.
Okay, so when you do that, your mind calm, the eyes close. The eyes close is to shut down outside the distractions. So the same time, you pay first of all, you pay attention to the third eyes or the center of your brain. Slowly, you pay attention to the breathe, and slowly, you make your mind coming down to reunite the Dantian. And from there, you can keep there, sit for a long time. It's a meditation process. To the Western society, maybe meditation is not that common. But to Chinese society, it is very, very common. Because since ancient times, Chinese always learned to meditate, to feel yourself. That's become Chinese medicine and Chinese culture. That's why the meditation becomes so popular in the East, includes India, China, Japan, all those, all those areas. So when you put your hands here, then your mind, boom. You put the hands here, the mind disperse. So energy coming out. So that's what I call hold the hand to firm. So a lot of times people they push this to push the thumb together. This one so so in. That's called stamp. The stamp, this one according to my understanding from Qigong dictionary. This means in ancient time they created for the layman people or the people they the beginner of a Tai Chi or a Qigong practitioner to concentrate the mind. Every time the mind going away, they gently push the thumb against each other. When they push it, they bring the mind back here. And then in this area, they can focus in again. Because it's not easy to keep your mind in this center line and then to reunite into one point into the lower Dantian area. So the first piece actually is very simple. Sit there and keep your mind calm. The tongue touch the pad of your mouth with the deep abdominal breathing. Until your entire body cooling down, the mind is the center. <laughs> So once you come down your mind, relax your body, then you just keep your eyes closed and start biting your teeth. You when you bite it, it's top and the bottom, it tap each other. Like this concentration. The question for this one is so simple. People ask, why they tap the teeth? You should remember in ancient times, even go back to a couple hundred years ago, there was a dentist. If there's no dentist, the most important thing is the key, how you maintain this key strength. So usually people, when they reach 50, 60, then they lose the teeth. When they lose the teeth, that's because the gum is not strong enough. According to Chinese Qigong experience, those people, they chew more meat. The more they chew it, the gum stronger, the teeth stronger. Those are the people that eat the soft food, usually the teeth come off earlier. So because of the reason, this one is to stimulate the gum and to improve the circulations of the whole gum area. So in this case, the keys, teeth can continue to maintain strongly, firmly in its foundation, the gum. It's not that. The second part of a, a second purpose for this uh, biting the teeth is actually to generate echo on the, on the back side of the brain. You have to think, this part, you've got general noise here, and this is the, the brain is a chamber. So you bite here, it generates echo on the back. Actually, it stimulates the entire brain's cells to make it wake up. Or also to maintain the entire brain's cells' functions. So from here, you're doing that, you can see they close your eyes. Then they start biting the teeth to generate echo from this area and bounce back to the back. Yeah. If you try by yourself, you can feel there's a Dong, dong, dong. That kind of sounds vibrate entire brain. It's very good for this one to regulate the nerve, the nerve system of entire brain to maintain its healthy conditions. But from the Chinese experience for the last thousand years, it works very nicely. So I wonder if this piece can be used for today by the Western science to borrow the method to solve the problem for the brain problem. Then. After you finish it, biting the teeth, you start wake up. When you start wake up, the brain start wake up, then physically you get involved. That's why immediately the second piece, you try to stretch the back. Because when you stretch the back, the reason for that, because ancient time, the bed is not like today. It's very soft. It's a stiff. When it's a stiff, when you wake up, the back is tightened. It's stiff. 
So because the reason, the first thing you have to learn to stretch the back. How do you stretch it? It's very simple. Because of all the muscle connected from the head to the sacrum area, the, all these muscle is the uh, same muscles. So what they do, they put the hand behind the top side of the head. Don't put it on the neck area. <clears throat> because you need to stretch the neck as well. So you inhale, then you exhale. Push your head backwards and at the same time, you hold your hand forwards. So it becomes this kind of stretching position. Ah, that's good. It almost like the opposite as we stretch this way. But instead, they stretch this way. At the same time, the head look, look back. The motion they created for this kind of exercise to right away you can find the whole back become stretch and loose up by tension and relaxing, tension and relaxing. So this become the second piece. You need this one for some number of times in order to have enough time, enough number to loose up the back, stretch the back, and allow it to reach the purpose of the stretching. The third piece, it becomes called beating the heavenly drums. So what you do is very simple. It's very important you want to generate echo. It doesn't matter how. The brain is remain the headquarters or the general of your entire body's function. So because the reason you want to make your brain as clear as possible. So how do you maintain the brain function clearly, healthily? In China, there are a lot of Qigong just for brains. One of them is this one. What you do, you put your hands, cover the ear. For example, there's a, there's a ear, you cover the ear. So when you cover the ear, the back side of your hands, you tap it this way. Remember, on the back, there's the two big muscles. These two big muscles supporting the entire head's weight. So what you do, actually on the back of the brain, about, uh, the back, you tap on these muscles. When you tap on this muscle, these two muscles support the brain. When you tap it, the entire brain, it generates the, the sounds, like a drum. So you hear, dong. Dong, 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 dong. Okay, so from here you can see I cover, then. So this kind of the tapping motions, you can see, you can hear the sound, dong, dong. Make sure the hand cover the ear tightly. If you don't cover tightly, they cover echo. It's not strong. When you press the number four, is turn the head. He said, turn your head frequently. This one is amazing. A lot of people today, they don't understand the neck is so important for your life. The neck is a junction. This is a junction for blood exchange between your head and the body. According to scientists' research today, we know every brain cell consumes 12 times or more of oxygen than regular cell. If you look at the anatomy structure, you can see there's two big arteries here. Behind it, there's another two small arteries go to the brain. But you look at your legs so big, actually there's one artery on each side. You'd be amazed how come the legs so big, there's only one artery, but the brain is so small, the head is so small that there are four arteries. That's because the brain cell consumes so much of oxygen. The question is the neck, neck area is a junction, is a passage for this cheek exchange and blood exchange. So if the neck it doesn't maintain this healthy condition, then you have problems. For example, a lot of people have a side headache for all kinds of problems, then lose the memory. That's because the uh, chi and blood circulation becomes stagnant on the neck area. That's not only that, because in the ancient time in the soldiers, the soldiers ahead, they always have a helmet. This helmet for the battle is very heavy. So not only that, they have to string your head all the time, so the neck muscle has to be strong. So when the head is so heavy with the helmet, at the same time, they will be able to turn, so the neck muscle has to be strong. It has to loose up. So because this reason, that become this piece is important. The most amazing part, all these neck muscles connected to lower part of the body. 
is not only just open up the neck, it's also open up all the connection connected to the center of the body. The form is so simple. One question is, that, should we do the neck this way? But you should understand from the traditional Chinese Qigong, there's no such things. They didn't say why, but from my research, there's not a piece. They said, put your leg, uh, head circle around so big. I didn't understand that until I started researching the arthritis. They started realizing the Western society already confirmed, the medical science confirmed. The people, they like to circle the head this way. Because what happened, for your vertebra, it designed, it can turn sideways easily. But you start going circle this way, through this kind of circulation, it grind the cartilage away. That's why a lot of people, they start building up that kind of habit, then the cartilage slowly grind away the general arthritis on the lower back area. That's why I start understanding why traditionally in ancient China, they never create a piece go this way. They do have a piece, small circle and small scale, you move around and lose it up, but they, they never ask you to try push your head this big. But in the eight piece of okay, what they teach you, they don't even ask you circle. What they ask you, just follow the natural human behavior. What? Turning your head. So what they do, from turning the head, you can see the shoulder slightly push forward, forward. The head push backwards. Now, which side mm, the neck being stretched? This part being stretched. So this one move forward. Again, go this side. So we come to the center, you inhale, you go to the sideway, you exhale. So the Qigong always have a, a good habit. Every time we move your hand out, we exhale. Every time you in, you inhale. That's for the human nature instinct. So the same thing, you turn to the side, you exhale, come into the center, you inhale. Okay. So you have to do this one for quite a number of the times until you have provide enough stretching exercise for the neck. This is important in ancient time, it's also important today, even though today we don't wear a helmet in the battles. But it's very good for you, especially lots of people have a, a, a headache all the time. Not only that, because you can see the neck muscle connected to the shoulder. A lot of time people have a headache, they didn't understand it because they had a problem. They didn't realize because of the shoulder injury. Or all injury they have, and they're stagnant the chi circulation over the area. So when this happens, all this kind of stretching process can slowly open up. Because every time you turn your head in a specific angle, then the nose muscle will be stretched and relax, stretch and relax. Eventually, you are massaging yourself through the movements. So from this exercise, you can see the joint slowly, it can open up, and the muscle, any kind of stagnation or even deep hidden uh, bruises can be removed. Is it? That's a trick. It's an exercise, it's a key point of removing stagnation of chi and blood. So after you finish the turning the head for some number of times, then you start to generate saliva. The just saliva is come from the grains underneath the ear, these two areas. So these grains is a producer the, the saliva to supply the water to moisturize the throat areas. To Chinese medicine, the saliva is so important. The saliva, you harmonize the body's young and balance the body's young. So if as long as you can make, make the saliva continue to supply to the throat area, to moisturize the throat areas, then your body can be maintained in the healthy, balanced conditions. So because the reason you had to maintain the saliva's production smoothly, then this become part of a very important part of chicken exercise in ancient time. So you have the general saliva. How do you improve this kind of saliva function or generation from the, the grains here? Yeah. The first thing, by circle your tongue in the mouth. After you circle it, continue to circle it. Through this exercise, the saliva started produced and start collecting in the mouth underneath the tongue. Then after you collect to quite amount, then you rinse it. You already know the human saliva can cure the germs. You see a lot of animals when they get injured, the animal will use the lip for the, the tongue to, to lift the injury, to cure the germs. 
The same thing, you understand, the saliva not only can kill the germs, and also can provide you the enzymes to your body's digestion. It maintains the body's metabolism. But sometimes when I teach people about a piece of bouquet, some people say, oh, yuck. It's not yuck. It's a saliva. It's come from your body. You swallow it all the time. But when you get a cold, the saliva is yellowish color come from the lung. That kind of saliva, you should not swallow it because that's why I try to get rid of it. But regularly when you are healthy, you actually swallow saliva all the time. So what you do is after you so much of saliva, you rinse it. When you rinse it, continue this kind of rinse, rinsing exercise. You can see I exercise the whole area to maintain the grain's function. After that, I swallow saliva by dividing by three gusps. Okay, let's become the end of the fourth piece. <laughs> Now, when you go to the fifth piece, let's start talking about kidneys, especially low back. Very few people understand say, how important of the low back. For example, this area, if you look at the body's anatomy structure, this area. In the center is a vertebra. After that, there's a muscle supporting the vertebra. All other areas, they have a skeleton supporting it so very firmly, strongly. This area is not. That's what allows you to move forward, move bend the sideways, and move backwards. Because the vertebra in the center. What do you think? This area carries the half of body's weight on the top. When these muscles on this way, the waist area start degenerating or weakening, then the body's weight will put on the vertebra and generate this, the pressure on the, on the vertebra actually squeeze this nerve system and cause a low back pain. So a lot of the low back pain come from because the physical strength on the waist area disappearing, weakening. That's because it's very important for this area, especially I come to Chinese Qigong. Dan Tian, where is the battery of the Qi? That means it's in the center. So the front side, back side energy had to be balanced. If you have a low back pain, that means all the energy blocked on the back side. The front side, back side losing balance. That's why when people have a low back pain, you find slowly, slowly, the body starts losing balance. The posture starts tilting forward, or they have to go backwards because energy starts losing balance. What's the worst part? If the low back gets tensed up, then the kidney chi cannot go downward. This is the kidney, this is the low back, this is the sacrum. The kidney chi is about to go down here, go to the bottom of your feet. This place we call yong chuan, the bottom of your feet. If a chi, kidney chi cannot go down there, that means the kidney chi cannot be regulated into a healthy conditions. That's why usually when people experience a low back pain, the second thing they start experience is a kidney problem. When people have a kidney problem, then what happened? Because you remember, the kidney is a two remove the acid, the, too much acid in the body, the kidney will remove it. Normally when you go to see the doctors, the doctor will collect with one sample of a urine sample from you. You can see the nurse will put a piece of paper there to check what pH value. is the acid level, is how much your kidney can remove the acid from the body. But where acid come from? The acid actually come from the liver. Because liver is a filter, it filters the blood. When the liver filters the blood, it's heavy work. So that means that's the reason that the liver related to what we talk about the food you eat. Because the blood absorbs the food. For example, alcohol makes the liver positive. The deep fried food makes the liver positive. So when that things happen, or too much of red meat, example, it makes the liver positive and produces heavy acid. Those acid has to be removed by the kidneys. If the kidney cannot remove the acid, the body's acid level is going to go up. Where is this acid going to go? Eventually, it will stay into the joints. When it stays in the joints, it becomes the arthritis gout. Okay. 
this one always experienced by those people. They start over 40s, go to 50s, they start experience. Usually the pain can start from the thumbs area or the big toes area. And slowly they develop, can get more serious until they cannot walk, they cannot move easily, the gout. So usually if you have a gout, the doctor will tell you, don't eat the red meat too much and don't drink alcohol. And even they cannot eat beans because beans produce acid. Soybeans, example. Okay. But so the most important come back to the key now. The kidney is important. You have to maintain the backside, the kidney, all to the sacrum in healthy conditions. So in this case, allow this whole low back area open so the kidney chi can go downwards. So this set is for the kidney. What they try to do is very simple how to do this one. The first one, you inhale, then hold the breath. You hold the breath, then use your hand and then rub it until it's warm. After it's warm, then use this heat, then touch the kidney. When you touch the kidney, you try to circle the kidney by your hands. Of course, you have someone to massage you, always the best. But if you don't, you have to do it by yourself. So because this reason, you have to massage yourself. If you circle inwards, you got nourishing. Because remember, kidney is extremely in channels. It's classified as water in the body. So when the time comes, kidney becomes deficiency. So that means in the winter time, you should nourish the kidney. But in summer time, you should release the essence young of the kidneys. So that means every time you massage this way, you trap the energy inwards. But you massage this way, you spread the chi outwards. So winter time, it goes this way. The summer time, it's going out. See? To Chinese a massage, qigong massage, all these rules, rules are very important. For example, if chi going this way, you're releasing it. Chi push backwards, you're nourishing. Your body is too young, you have to push it out. But your body is in, you have to push backwards. See? Because as a human nature, this energy releasing, this one you're nourishing. Toward the center you're nourishing, from the center away you're releasing. This becomes the kidney massage. So when you do that, hold the breath and until the hands warm, and when you touch it, then exhale. You should remember that's a trick. Every time you hold the breath, the energy trap. So yeah, that's why you want to inhale. Hold the breath, allow the energy trap into the palms. When you touch the kidney, then you exhale. Once you exhale, the energy suddenly boom, releasing. But where's your mind? Chinese always say, use your mind to lead the chi. See? For example, I want to move my hands from here to here. How did it happen? A lot of the Western people, they don't think about that. But Chinese Qigong heavily consider, for example, I want to move my hand to here. How did it happen? The first one I think first. When I think the mind did the chi, from the chi, they activate the nerve system and cause contraction. I move my hands. It's your mind. The mind is so powerful. But today we all understand, already understand the chi is bioelectricity. Circuit in the body. So eventually the mind, what the mind did, the mind generate potential difference, electric potential difference. In order to get the electricity circuit from one place to another place, you have to have electric potential difference. Otherwise, the electricity does not circulate. As you know, the, the qi is about electricity. The mind can generate potential difference that allows qi to circulate. So that's a key point. Today, the scientists already understand. It's amazing. Through thinking, you can get sick. Through thinking, you can heal yourself. Through thinking, you can lose your weight. Through thinking, you can build up your muscles. The reason you want to use a palm, because the center of your palm is called Lao Gong. This belongs to pericardium. From Chinese medicine, or Chinese Qigong is well known. The palm energy here is so strong. That's why a lot of healers, they use a palm to heal people. Because the reason you can generate the qi accumulate in the palms easily by rubbing it. So you hold the breath while you're rubbing it. After that, you put your hands on the back. When you put your hands on the back, and start exhale. When you exhale, all the chi release. When the chi release, where's your mind? The mind cannot be in your hand. Your mind is on your hand, the chi stay on the hand. 
That's why in the ancient documents, they say qi, your mind should be on the belly button, your navel. Why on the front? That's because when you put here, when your mind is here, the qi starts lead inwards. It's still continual trap on the outside. So those things is called secret in ancient time. Because simply only here and there, small difference make everything effective. See, after you do that, then it's a circle. Remember, I mentioned you circle inwards is nourishing, circle outwards is releasing. Then you do it for, I think they say for nine times. Again, when we talk about number, how many times, it's only a suggestion by ancient masters. Those are numbers suggested for the average people. But if you are sick, you are not healthy, you are weak, you don't have to follow all those numbers. Because the number is only suggested, especially in ancient time. The why people are strong, stronger than today. So I would suggest it start with a fewer repetition first. When you feel body is comfortable, then slowly, slowly you increase the number. It can even go beyond the number the ancient document recommend. The body's energy produced in this central area. Okay, through so the metabolism, water, food, digestion, and convert into the energy. But this energy, when they trap inside too much, it has to be released. So the arm and leg, that's why the body have 12 channels. Six channels go to the arm, and another six channels go to the leg. Through the exercise, they improve the circulation, connected internal organ to the outside. So in this case, the organ can be regulated smoothly. The question is the two shoulders and two hip joints. These four joints is very important because it's a junction. So whenever you have a problem for the shoulders, problem for the hip joints, then the chi cannot circulate smoothly. And then that becomes stagnant. Of course, your internal organ consequently will generate problem as well. So because the reason is very important for you to lose up here, lose up here, and lose up the hip joint as well. So become, that's the number, number six. So what you do is so simple. You just keep your legs straight forward. So when you do that, like uh, you're rolling the ball. So I believe everybody, you rolled the ball before. So what you do, you go this way, and the gently, you pull back. Now you can see I'm exercising my lower back. At the same time, you can see I've exercised my shoulder. So when I extend forward, as I mentioned earlier, you exhale. When you pull back, you inhale. But people always say, can I do this one? Exhale, you move forward, inhale. You can do the same thing. Because according to Chinese Qigong, the breathing is only a strategy. Depends what's your mind. If you think about, I want to push my hand forward, then you exhale. But you think about, I want to pull my hand backwards. My mind is stronger by pulling back hands backward. You can use the pulling back as an exhale. Depends on what your mind is thinking. So because of this reason, you can adjust accordingly. But normally speaking, when you extend, it's easier when you exhale, so easy to release the energy. When you move back the hands inwards, you inhale, because it's easy to lead the energy inwards. So open up the channels easily. Okay? But remember, as I said, it's not strictly you have to follow that. You have to practice accordingly. For example, if you are sick, now, after you recover from sickness, you don't want to continue releasing your chi outside. What you do? Instead, you push out and exhale, continue releasing release the chi outside. What you do? Eventually, you inhale. When you inhale, your hand push it out, but sometimes you inhale. That's why the energy conserved instead of releasing. So, it depends how you play. So, you have to understand the theory behind. Then you can understand why a lot of Chinese medical qigong when you extend the hand, they ask you inhale instead of exhale because those are for the recovery for the sickness. Okay, so this one what you do, you go this way, inhale and exhale. Okay, now from here let's try to see. Is this one what is good for the organs? You'll be surprised. This is good for the lung and for your heart. Okay, we try to analyze 
the body's lung situation. The lung sandwich between the front and the back, everybody know that. But now you can see this uh, breathing pipe. The breathing pipe is in the front, it's not in the center. So this is a breathing pipe coming down to the lung. So the lung is here, the heart is here. All right, if I ask you, because I come to science today, we don't use 100% of our lungs. Usually we use about 44% to 50%. If those people that exercise a lot, they can go up to all the way to 80%. But question, you never use 100% of your lungs. So that means the side of the lungs, the back side of the lungs, usually you don't use it as much. So you don't use it as much because this is a breathing pipe. So when they're coming down here, which part of your lung usually you use most? Think about it. Of course, where is the contact with outside air? That's the one you use most. That means the front side of your lung you use more often than other places. That's because the reason I come to China medicine, the front side of your lung is young. When it's young, because it's activated more, and more energy can be trapped here. That means this front side of the lung you use all the time. And people always ask me, say, Dr. Yang, how do you know that? I say, just uh, watch people how they run. After they finish the running, you can see they put the hand forward, they go this way. <sighs> you have to think, this ribs, outside ribs is muscle, inside ribs is muscle. Under inside the ribs, this muscle, under this muscle is your lung. When I go my hand forward, my body arc forward, my front size of the ribs muscle relaxing. So the lung allow the front side of the lung is more relaxed than allow the chi and or allow the carbon dioxide and oxygen exchange more efficient on front side. Because the reason when people after the run, after the exercise, they go this way, <sighs> it's easier for them to get recovery. But you have to think another thing. When people get excited, or people have a heart burn, or people heart jump faster because the front side is too young. Of course, the front side is too young, it's not good for the heart. You should know. But if it's not good to the heart, that means front side is too young. What usually we do? A lot of times you breathe too fast, you find out the body too energized. What we do? We go this way. <sighs> when you start bending your shoulder back, push your shoulder back, bend your body back, which side of the lung is more relaxing? The back side is more relaxing. So eventually, when you push it this way, inhale, exhale, you are forcing the back side of your lung to function. And now you understand the condition. It's very simple. So slowly, you are shifting the too much of yang from front side to back side. You find the heartbeat slowing down. The cooling down the front. See? Like this kind of exercise, especially very important for those people that have asthma. The people have asthma because this is a breathing pipe. The bigger this breathing pipe is too young. It's too young, make the nerves there. It's too sensitive. So whatever happened is chalk because the nerves too sensitive make everything swollen. So from my past experience, there are a few patients that have asthma. Through this kind of breathing exercise, focus on the back side of your lung. Slowly they can shift the energy from the front side to the back side. They find out the front side can cool down. You look at people, we experience it. Inhale, the energy on the back. Exhale, the back side of the lung compressed, allows it. So that means every time you move this way, you use the back side of the lung. But if I move this side, this side of the lung is more relaxed. So now I focus on this side of the lung. If I use this side, you focus on this side of the lungs. So let's give you an idea already. People always are wondering why Chinese created a lot of amazing movements. What's the movements for that? This movement is just not only for the exercise of the muscles or joints, it also to relate to the organ structure. For example, I move my right hand up, the liver is more relaxing. Because liver, this area opened up. The same thing for the lung. If I go this way, this side of the lung is more relaxing. Guess I, the back side of the lung is more relaxing. See? So that's why I become this piece. It's so important for your heart and for your lungs. You want to remove the heart fire from your heart. For example, you are too excited. When you're too excited, the heartbeat starts going faster, then you're going to cause heart attack. You understand from Chinese medicine, happiness is bad for your heart. Because it makes you too excited and cause heart attack. So what you have to do, you have to know how to breathe deeply in this way. So that's why the, when you start it, they go this way. That's from front side of the lung. If you inhale, this exhale. 
inhale and exhale. After you finish it, then what you do, you become reverse, now you inhale. Now which side of lungs I'm using? I'm using the back side of my lung and exhale. So because of this reason, you can continue to activate the lung cell, maintain their healthy conditions. Instead of only focusing on the front side. That's the key of our health for the lungs. So it allows you to have a carbon dioxide and oxygen exchange efficiently in the body. When you do this one, the first thing they do is very simple. You will inhale and exhale. Yeah, this stretching exercise, come and see. Have you ever seen people in the morning when they wake up, they go, oh, this way. In the afternoon, when the body starts fatigued, the muscles start contracting, they also do this way. Oh, there's two times you can see people come and they use. Whenever they feel the body fatigue, the body already tells you, you need to sleep. That's the time we yawn. Or you just wake up in the morning, all the cells are still in a sleeping state. How do you wake up the cells? It's by this stretching. So next time you find out you wake up in the morning, your mind wake up, but body doesn't want to wake up. Very simple. Just put your arm up and stretch it. Right away, you wake up. You want to do something. So, so this one has become very important. In ancient times, Chinese the Qigong, they follow the nature of human instinct. When you move your hand up, all these toes have been stretched. Now internal organs start to open up instead of trap. So in order to make yourself completely wake up, because remember, this is number seven now. This number seven piece is almost the end, because they are total, there are eight pieces. So because the reason near the end, so you have to activate the physical body now, entire torso entire body. So that's what they do. They inhale and exhale. Yeah, stretch any way you like to. As long as you keep your arm up, stretch your body upwards and then make the torso upright. This way. After that, you push this down and to push your head up. Remember, as I said, this one was created for soldiers. The head has to be able to push up because of the helmet. So because of the reason this one push down and push this up, to what? To raise up your spirit. You go like that, the spirit is down. You go up like that, the spirit is up. So how, how do you raise up this kind of spirit in the battles? In the ancient times, it's a battle against the enemy. Today, it's a battle against sickness. See, Chinese Qigong already tell you, if this part is strong, you survive. You're strong, you're healthy. If in this part, you surrender. You're weak, you die. Because this part controls the entire body's energy. When this part controls the entire body's energy manifestation as well. So because of the reason you're going up and going down. So you inhale. I do the same as you imitate the way you're young. I don't mind stretch turn the body slowly, great, great just side by side. Then inhale, then exhale, push up. Okay, when you do this one, actually you're falling from last piece. Actually the legs still forward. So after that, you finish this one, the hand push forward and hold your toes and gently stretch it. So what you can see, you stretch all the leg, back side of the muscle, my torso, all the way to the neck. Slowly stretch it. So when you stretch here, you should understand one good part is what? The kidney. I mean, kidney is on the back. On this kidney, on the top of the kidney is muscle. That's where the back muscles. What you do, through this kind of stretching, the muscle will push the kidney in. When you relax, the kidney come out. So this is a massage in the kidney. It's one of the very important keys of maintaining kidney's function and its healthy conditions. So let me repeat again. Is inhale and then exhale. And inhale and then exhale. Inhale, and then exhale. You like to do it better, you don't have to stretch both the same with the same power. You can change the right hand side, focus on right hand side of kidney and left side of kidney, the way you like to. The ancient document will provide you the theory, the principle, and the basic movements. 
You are the one. Once you understand the theory, you can develop and you can create. You should understand it's an art. Qigong is an art. When it is an art, you should not be restricted from what it passed down to us. The art is meant to be creative. If your art is not creative, that means the art is dead. Because the reason why you understand, once you understand theory, understand the movement. You should learn how to create with the right theory. Otherwise, you remain on the basic levels. Because now you exercise the body now. You have to allow the chi release from the body. So the last piece actually sit there quietly. Continue the tongue, the tongue touch the top, the palate of the mouth, connected yin and yang, conceptional and governing vessel. Not only that, the hands still coming back here to the wogu to hold the firm position. At the same time, close your eyes. When you pay attention, do not draw it the saliva by circling your tongue like before. Because once you use your tongue to circulate, then again, you generate the tension on the mouth area. Now, this piece completely calm, relax, okay? So, stay there and pay attention to the tongues, underneath the tongue, slowly saliva will generate it. You should collect the saliva until mouth full. Again, divide in three, gasp and swallow it. You have to inhale, and swallow, then exhale, you did it down to the Dantian. It helps everything to cool it down. The same time the ancient document tell you, you should imagine the body on fire by thinking. Why you imagine the body on fire? Once your mind think about body on fire, then the chi lead outwards. It's very simple. Just ask them to imagine the body on fire, then energy coming out instead of trapped inside. So to, re to build the strength of a guardian chi, Chinese called guardian chi. Actually, in the Western society, people call it the call uh, aura energies. But Chinese call it guardian chi because the body has an inner shield, protect the body. That's one to strengthen it. But eventually, if you know the qigong, you find out it's very simple. You sit there, you deep breathing, you inhale. When you exhale, slowly pay attention to exhalation until you reach the maximum. It's very simple. Hold your breath there for a couple of seconds. Probably five seconds is good. After that, you inhale again. So when you do that, it's almost the same thing as you push your car. It's only a trick. You push your car, remember, you inhale deeply, then exhale. When you push too very hard, you hold the breath the last instant. What you do? When you hold the breath, allow the chi to reach the maximum. You play the same trick. But this time, softer. Do not tense up like you push your car. You inhale, then exhale slowly and continue push abdomen out like you're pushing a car. Slowly this energy go to expand. When you expand to the maximum, then hold your breath for five seconds and come back. Inhale. But pretty soon you realize the body energy start expand like a balloon. That's what we call skin breathing. In Chinese called skin breathing. Some they call body breathing. You want to understand this, uh, all this technique describes Again, please refer to the book, The Root of Chinese Qigong, and also The Essence of Shaolin White Crane. Those two books I explained clearly on this breathing technique. Another book may be good is called The Essence of Tai Chi Qigong. They will also help you because it's a soft. Okay, so once you finish it, then you can stand up and walk around for a few minutes, and then you finish it. Then you can resume your regular activities. Total from the beginning until the end take you only about 15 to 18 minutes. If you follow in the ancient documents, repeat the same number as ancient documents suggested. So it won't take you too long, but you realize soon, take about three months, you start to see the effectiveness. And the six months you find the body gets stronger and stronger. You build up the habit your health will maintain. But remember, sitting a piece of brocade is not the main exercise on a piece of brocade. The main exercise is standing. Because remember, this is designed only for you the early morning to wake up, or also for the people that cannot walk. So that's why this, this 
exercise is very good for those uh, people on the wheelchairs. Okay. And thank you.